So how to figure out if a line has a positive or a negative slope? The easiest way to think about this is think about the way we read. We read from left to right. So if the line is going uphill as we read from left to right, then it's positive, it's good. If the line, on the other hand, is going downhill from left to right, it has a negative slope, not so good. So in your log tables, you get two equation formulas. Now the question is, when should you use what formula? Um, now the first formula is y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. The fact is you can use this formula for getting the equation of the line in every situation. It works for all situations. Nevertheless, I would recommend it to use it only for certain situations because you'll find that using the second formula, y equals mx plus c, is much quicker to use in certain situations. So the question is, what situations? Well, as a rule of thumb, I would say, if, you don't, if you're not given a diagram in a question, if you're not given a diagram, you can't figure out what the y-intercept is, so this formula isn't really of much use to you. So in the case that you don't have a diagram given to you in the question, I would use this formula. If, on the other hand, you are given a diagram, and you can see clearly where the line cuts through the y-axis, that means you know what c is, and you can also figure out what the slope is, the m here. So if that's true, then I would use this much, much quicker way of getting the equation of a line. How to find the equation of a line when you're given just a simple diagram like this? Here's the trick. If you can easily see where the y-intercept is, in other words, where the line cuts the y-axis, and you can figure out what the slope is, then you can use y equals mx plus c to quickly get the equation of the line. Remember that m stands for the slope of the line and can be calculated by getting the rise over the run. So the rise in this case would be this part here, which is 2 in length, from 0 to 2. And then the run would be from 0 to 3, so that's 3 in length. So it's going to be 2 over 3, and of course it's going to be negative because remember it's going downhill. Remember also that the C here stands for the y-intercept, which in this case would be 2, where the line cuts across the y-axis. So we can say that C is equal to 2. And then now that we know what both M and C are, we can write out the full equation. So as M is equal to minus 2 over 3 and C is equal to 2, we can write out the full equation as Y equals minus 2 over 3X plus 2. So let's look at the second situation where we're, we're asked to find the equation of the line, but we're not given any diagram. All we're given is the slope of the line and a point on the line. So what we should do in that case is use this formula, y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. And for that we need a point and a slope, which we have already. So we simply need to plug in the point, the x1, y1 values, into x1 and y1 in the formula. And the 3 quarters goes in for m in the formula, because m stands for slope. So you can see we've plugged in 2, the y value, in for y1 and 1 the x value in for x1 and then finally the slope 3 quarters in for m now to work this out some people multiply the 3 quarters by what's in the brackets here but I prefer to do it another way um, and that is to take the 4 here which is dividing into 3 and bring it over here and multiply it by this expression so a basic law of solving equations is that when you bring a number across the equal to sign, then you do the opposite of what it was doing. So here the 4 was dividing, so over here it's going to multiply to give you this expression here, or this equation here. And then it's, a, it's, it's much easier now because we got rid of the fractions and we simply just multiply out the brackets and uh, reorder the equation until it's in the right form. So I'm going to do that now. So after multiplying, we get 4y minus 8. So 4 by minus 2 is minus 8. And then 3x minus 3. Now, we could leave it like this. This is, is after all, an equation. But uh, when, it, when, it, when it asks you for the equation of line, they expect you, you to put it in a certain format. And that usually is, means you start with an x, followed by a y, followed by a number, equal to 0. 
So we're going to just we re reorder these until we have our answer in that format. So what we've done here is we've decided to bring the, these guys here across the equal to sign so that we start with a 3x uh, and then the, of course the 4y changes to minus 4y and the minus 8 changes to plus 8 over here. And now all that remains to do is add the two numbers here uh, to simplify it as much as we can. So you can now see the format that we're expected to get this into. Uh, X followed by Y followed by a number. Perfect. So let's say we're asked to graph this line here. The equation is X plus 2Y equals 0. You notice there's no kind of number on its own. It's not like X plus 2Y plus 7 equals 0. When that happens, when there's no number on its own, then you know that the line is definitely going through the origin. Right? So that's the first thing to note about this. Uh, and now, once you know that it's going through the origin, you then have to figure out another point on the line so that you can draw the line. So the first thing I would do is rearrange this in the form of y equals mx plus c. So I bring the x over here, so it'll be 2y equals minus x, y equals minus a half x, so we're taking the 2 and we're dividing it into x, basically. So we know straight away that the slope is minus a half. Now, if it's a minus slope, we know it's going downhill. And then if the rise over the run is 1 over 2, what we can do is we can do the rise, we can go down 1 here from, from the, the point that we know the line is on. So go down 1 and then across 2 to get the second point, and we mark in our point here, and we have a point here as well, so then we just draw the line through the two points. That's about the easiest way of doing this problem. So one very easy question you may be asked is to get the equation of lines parallel to the x or the y axis. For example this line here. See the way it's going through the number 2 on the x axis? So you can say all the way along this line that x is equal to 2. So that's, your, that's actually your equation for this line. x equals 2. Likewise, this line here, which is going to 1 on the y-axis and is parallel to the x-axis, the equation of that is y equals 1. So as long as it's parallel to the, either the x or the y-axis, you can use this simple rule. Uh, for example, if you had a line going through 2 here, it would be y equals 2. When you're doing functions, you will sometimes be asked to find the axis of symmetry of a quadratic function. Uh, and that's usually a line that cuts the parabola right down the middle like this. So this would actually be uh, one of these examples. So in this case, the equation of this line would be x equals 2. Now the slopes of parallel lines are always equal. Uh, you know the slope really represents kind of like what it sounds like. Like think of the slope of a hill. If you have two parallel hills, they're going to have the same slopes. So that's all you really need to remember in this case. The slopes of parallel lines are always the same. So you might get a question, it, it, you say given a point on this line and you're asked to find the equation of this line even though you don't know the slope, but you do know the slope of this one. So you can just say, well, if this one is a half, then this one must be a half as the two lines are parallel. Now, uh, there's also a relationship between the slopes of perpendicular lines. So uh, perpendicular, if you don't know what that means, uh, this line is perpendicular to this line because there's a 90 degree angle between them. So if that's true, then the slope of this one uh, will have a relationship to the slope of this one. And the relationship is as follows. If you multiply the two of these, you always get an answer of minus 1. Now, another way of thinking about that is... Uh, if the slope of this is 4, then the slope of this will be the negative inverse or the negative reciprocal of 4. That means your 4 is really 4 over 1. You're turning that upside down, making it 1 over 4, and making it negative. So it's the negative reciprocal. So one type of question you may be asked is to prove that these two lines are perpendicular to each other. You might have to find out what the slope of each are. And then once you've found that out, what you could say is that uh, we could say like the slope of k is mk, 
and the slope of the line L is ML. So MK times L, ML equals 4 over 1 times minus 1 over 4, which equals minus 4 over 4, which in turn equals minus 1. And once you know that it's equal to minus 1, you can say therefore K is perpendicular to L. Here's a shorthand way of writing that. Uh, the three dots stands for therefore K is perpendicular to L. So another question you may be asked is to draw the graph of an, an equation like this, y x plus y equals 2. Now a good strategy for doing this is to find out where the line cuts the x and the y axis. So I'll start off by figure, trying to figure out where it cuts the y axis, so this point here. You know for sure that, that, that x, the x value is going to be 0 at this point because it's above 0 on the x axis. So that's your starting point. You put 0 in for x in the equation. So replace x with 0. And then from there you can work out what the y value is. y is equal to 2. So that's the, the 2 value from, from, the, from this point, or the y value from this point. So this point here is 0, comma 2. Now we're going to do the same thing for the x-axis. So when we look at this point here, uh, we, we don't really know what the x value is, but we do know it, the y value is 0 because it's opposite 0 on the y axis. So likewise here, we can put the, the value 0 in for y in the equation, and that lets us find out what x is, because x plus 0 equals 2, therefore x is equal to 2. So uh, this point here is going to be 2 comma 0. And if you notice... Um, the rule for getting where a line cuts either the x or the y axis is kind of easy to remember because uh, to find out where it cuts the x axis we let the opposite letter equal to zero, we let y equal to zero. And to find out where it cuts the y axis we let x equal to zero. Uh, once we get our two points then we can just map them out or plot them and then draw the line through the two points. Now sometimes you may be asked what the point of intersection is between two lines. So if you think about that, it's going to be a point, so it's going to be an x and a y value that satisfies both equations, the equation of this line and the equation of this line. So if it satisfies both equations, then we can find out what the x and y value are by doing simultaneous equations of the two lines. So you basically you get the equation of this line and the equation of this line, you put them on top of each other and solve by doing simultaneous equations. So don't mix that up with the previous videos where we talked about where a line intersects the x and the y axis. That's not what we're talking about here, it's where two lines intersect each other. And for that you need to use simultaneous equations. Now another thing you might be asked on occasions is is a particular point on a line right so you may be given a point let's take two examples this point here which is not on the line and this point which is on the line let's say you didn't have the diagram and you were just asked to see if either of these points is on this line so if you didn't have the diagram you wouldn't be able to say for sure uh, whether they are or not uh, the best way to do it is actually to substitute the each point into the equation, right? So if you substitute, because remember these are x and y values, if you substitute these in, for, like the zero in for x and the two in for y, uh, if the equation is true afterwards, then you know that the point is on the line. So here you see two does in fact equal to zero plus two. That means it is on the line. The point is on the line. Whereas if you substitute these x and y values into the equation, you get 3, which does not equal to 0 plus 2. So in that case, we can say it's definitely not on the line. So that's a method you can use to figure out if a point is on the line without actually seeing the graph. And this is a very important concept to remember, especially for when you're dealing with functions questions. Uh, you can often use this method to solve, I would say, maybe 70% of problems in functions questions. So it's more important than it appears at first sight. Um, 
you have to realize that if a point is on the line then it, it will fit exactly into the equation so you'll be able to substitute it into the equation okay so that's uh, completes the summary of coordinate geometry um, I dealt with the main points that I think are would be of issue to most people um, I've left out some certain things so this is not comprehensive but um, these are the main points that you need to know to be able to do well in this question in the exam